So I got a suspicious package in the mail from one of our subscribers. Thought I'd open up with you guys and see what's inside this thing. Looks pretty interesting, doesn't it? It's from Helco Work. I think I know what that is. Look at that beast. Now this is one heck of an axe. Look at the head on this thing. So this massive axe was sent to me by one of our subscribers, Brian. Brian, thank you very much. This is a very nice looking axe. This is a, a design. Um, it's the Helco Work Vario 2000 series. And basically they've, they've created a, an axe head design that bolts into your handle, and this is a hickory wood handle. They um, they put a lot of pride into their craftsmanship, similar to Grampers Brooks or uh, Holtz Brooks. These are very good quality axes. It's designed as a felling axe. It has a four pound head on it, but they call it a universal axe because it could also be used for splitting. But its initial design is that of a felling axe. Now I will say that it is a very heavy axe. I mean, look at the size of that head. This thing is massive. So I have never tried one of these axes. They're, they're the craziest looking axe. You would think, you know, the way that this is designed with the, the, the steel sleeve and the, the bolts coming through there, that it would hold up pretty well. I mean, I can't imagine that head coming loose. Um, you do, it does come with an Allen wrench for taking those bolts out. Um, Let's we'll see what else it comes with. It comes with some head oil and uh, some matches. They also have a little uh, uh, book in here with all their different axes. Now, with the Helco Work um, brand, I really like their their traditional axe. Um, or is it the classic series? I think it's the traditional, um, kind of the, the the look that's similar to the Grand First Brooks look. I mean, but this is an ax that I had been wanting to try because it just looks like a powerful ax. And it is it, it feels like it's got a lot of weight to it. So with a good swing, I'm pretty sure you could do some damage with this ax. So this is pretty exciting. I, I can't wait to try this thing out. Brian, thank you very, very much. That was a very nice gift. I think, it, you know, for all of us who have had a high quality tool and, and don't just buy the most affordable thing out there. And, and I'm saying this from a standpoint of sustainability. I could not depend on a $20, $30 cobalt uh, felling axe if the world went to pot tomorrow. And as we know, the world's already going to pot. Everybody's growing up. Something like this, this axe, is something that you can depend on. I mean, that is a pretty sweet ax. It's a super heavy ax. I can't wait to put this up against some of my other axes. You know, I think, you know, from a universal standpoint, I'm sure that my Grand First Brooks splitting mall will outperform this when it comes to splitting. Uh, I, I'm almost certain of it, but if I could only get one ax for felling and splitting, this is probably gonna be one of your best bets. From a felling standpoint, Again, I, I really like the quality of my Scandinavian Forest Axe by Grand First Brooks. But this has got a four pound head on it. I mean, this thing is massive. So when it comes down to taking down a larger tree, working on a larger project, um, the weight of this head is gonna do a lot of work for me. And again, it's, it's high quality forged steel, just like uh, some of the other axe companies that I've talked about on this channel. Helco Work, and I think I'm saying their name correctly, is just an incredible brand, a very high quality tool. Um, I think this is going to be a fantastic axe to add to my collection. You have to have, if you understand tools and you understand axes and you understand knives, everything is used for different things. You, you don't have the perfect universal everything. Gifts like this are a great reminder to us of what we're doing is important to our viewers. And that's something I wanted to talk to you guys about real quickly because I get a lot of comments on the channel 
you know, can you put out more videos on food security? Can you, and I, I am gonna be putting out another video on food security. There's been some very interesting developments recently from uh, China really cracking down on uh, their food security with some of the laws that they've been coming out with. And then here in the US, we actually have a bill that was introduced on August 5th by um, Chucky Schumer of all people uh, to, how should I put this delicately, control food security here in the United States. And I'm going to be doing a speech in, in front of you know probably about a thousand people at a convention uh, sometime in September. I'm, I'm not gonna bother bringing up where it is or what it is because it's, it's, a, it's a convention that was sold out. But uh, they asked me to come there and, and be a keynote speaker on the right to farm because there's a lot of changes going on legally, there have been, that are impacting our rights to farm as small farmers, large farmers. You, you hear about these cases against large farmers, you have no idea how much is impacting the small farmers as well. And so um, I'll be doing a talk on our right to farm. I'm probably going to be even tying in some of the information that comes out in that new bill if that new bill is in fact uh, published by the time I go up there. It's gonna take me some, some time to properly digest that bill and what it all means uh, going into the future. I, I know that Ice Age Farmers also have been watching for that bill to come out. There's a lot of us that have been watching for that bill to come out because once we have what's in it and we can go through and analyze it, we can start to explain to people what it is, what it means. Seeing the, the group of people that introduced it, I, I think I have kind of a concept of what's going on with it. I think we're going to see in the near future an effort to try and position the U.S. government as a controller to all things agriculture. So they would basically be buying grains off of farmers and putting those grains back out to market to uh, food producers. The problem is, you know, they'll pitch it in a way that says, well, we're guaranteeing the price of farmers to guarantee they stay in business. We're guaranteeing the food supply chain to make sure that there's not a break like there was in, in COVID-19. But what's gonna end up happening is they're gonna, they're gonna end up controlling the price in the marketplace. It's basically gonna take the farmer and turn the, the average farmer into a government employee in, in not so many words. I mean, they, they basically will be working for the government. They won't have, there won't be, you know, the sky's the limit in the industry. What there will be is a non-competitive market. You, you own land, you, you raise food, your profit is set. Um, there will be no um, ingenuity left in the industry if that happens. So that's something that I've been watching for. Um, and I think that ultimately, it, whatever we see in that bill, we're gonna start seeing a transition to government control of our food supply chain here in the US. And we've already seen it happening in China. I mean, Lord knows in China, you get weighted at some restaurants when you go in and depending on the weight that you weigh when you go in will depend on the portion size that you get with your meal. You might spend, you know, $8 at McDonald's and your meal might be bigger or smaller than the next guy depending on the weight when you walked in there. They have taxes on food waste. They have a lot of things going on in China right now. You may think that they are far-fetched from, you know, where we are in the US, but I don't, I don't think so. I think we've got, the political appetite out there to try and do some of the same things that some of those countries are doing. Another thing that I am gonna be talking about when it comes to that is just, you know, this this entire situation, you know, since, since May, what was it, May 25th, 2020, where we've just had these relentless protests and riots across the United States. Uh, I am gonna do a follow-up video talking about what's going on there. I did a civil war video a while back and I brought up several reports. I'm gonna dig in a little deeper into those reports and not just the reports, but the motive behind those reports, how they've been used and how far into our government system, all the way up to the highest office of our country, some of these radicals have actually had influence. It may surprise you. If you don't know that stuff, it's gonna surprise you. Um, but we definitely have 2020 for the entire world has been a different world. Um, and it's, it's been a difficult one. But anyway, uh, I've had subscribers ask me for more of that content, you know, less of the review content. And believe it or not, product reviews, they, they're never super popular videos off of the get-go, but they do help generate some, some revenue. The other thing that I try and do on our channel is break up the dialogue a little bit. If I just put out 
some of those research videos, what happens is I get flagged. And when I get flagged, um, my viewership drops, my message doesn't get out to everybody. Um, and so I keep it mixed up so that I'm less likely to hit a, a bad chord with, with the big brother, so to speak. And product reviews are a great way to do that, but they're also a way for me to help introduce to you guys some tools and test some tools to see you know, what is actually worth spending money on and you know, help you make smart investment choices to be more self-sustainable. We can't just go out and buy cheap chain saws and, and cheap tools and expect to be able to sustain a family for 20 years if we hit a period of time where manufacturing goes down. We, you know, inflation, that's another thing that I've been working on uh, researching lately is you know, the Fed's policy right now on inflation. Somebody commented the other day that 2% is, is not a, a bad target for the Fed. 2% is the, is the inflation target the Fed has had. Last week, the Fed pretty much signaled that they're taking the, 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 uh, the lid off that 2%. They think 2% or more is good for the economy because they're trying to drive up uh, wages. But we've also seen lumber prices skyrocket, iron ore uh, skyrocket, which is driving up steel. If you've noticed, the new car prices are extremely high. There's a lot less uh, new cars on the market this year, which is driving up the used car market. We're starting to see these prices all over the place take off. You have lumber prices go up, that means new home sales go go up. And, and if new home prices go up, that means the existing home prices go up. And it, really the only way you can protect yourself from that entire situation is, you know, if you are invested in land. Uh, I think that land is gonna be a fantastic investment for a lot of people going forward because you can grow part of your groceries on there to stem some of the inflation. The, uh, when inflation hits land prices, uh, it doesn't back off as much as a, as a house would. Uh, land tends to hold its value a little better over the long term. And I think that land is ultimately going to go up in value faster than gold or silver. And it's more useful in the, in the long run. So you're not only getting the, the appreciation of the value, but you're also getting the, the use of the land to grow crops, to grow food, to raise chickens, to raise cows, whatever it is you need to do. You can actually cut back a significant amount of costs while owning something that appreciates significantly in value. Um, so these are all things that are, that are important to talk about. They're important subjects, but I have to mix up the content, which is why I throw in uh, some of the projects that I'm working on, which is why you know, I'm gonna be doing some more product reviews on our channel. I have to keep the content diverse to keep us following out of favor with um, certain controlled algorithms. Now, the other thing that we have been very passionate about on our channel, and we haven't done as much this year, and this is something that I've wanted to talk to you guys about. We have a series called Meet My Neighbor. Um, the agricultural industry has faced a lot of scrutiny over the years from um, climate change to animal abuse. And Meet My Neighbor is a series that my wife and I started. And the reason why we started this is because we re recognized back in 2018 when Florence hit the area and just swamped it. We, we knew some, a small farm that because of an appraiser's uh, negligence in flagging their farm as being in a 500 year flood zone, they had no flood insurance and their house was completely underwater. So literally while the aftermath of, of Florence was still hitting us during the hurricane itself, kind of right as the hurricane ended, while well, storms were still coming through, we helped them by bringing you know animals onto our property. But then I went out and I started filming and I started to tell their story. Um, and at the time, we only had 10,000 subscribers, not even 10,000, maybe 7,500 subscribers. I, I can't remember exactly what it was. It wasn't a huge number of subscribers, but we felt we needed to do something to try and help them out. And at the time, you know, we didn't have any other means other than you know letting them keep their animals here for a little bit. And so we went out and we filmed everything and we put together a video with a GoFundMe. And, you know, amazingly, we were able to raise a considerable amount of funds for this couple. And, uh, it, you know, it didn't cover their house, but what ended up happening was um, I had, I, being in real estate, I had gone back in and found the appraiser's mistake. And, um, you know, we kind of helped them approach the bank, the appraiser, they ended up getting a settlement on the house. And so the funds that we were we raised for them, they were able to replace a lot of their personal property that was lost. Uh, 
Um, but after doing that, we realized that we had the ability to get the word out. We had the ability to take our subscribership that we have, you guys, and be able to bring attention to something that otherwise would not get paid attention to. So these small farms all over the US, some of these people have very unique businesses. Uh, we did a bison farm last year. We went and, and filmed a, a Brahmin farm a year ago. Now we have some half Brahmin cows on our property because we've, we've decided that we really like the Brahmin breed. But some of these people have some very interesting business practices. Some of these videos that we, we create when we go to these farms uh, could give our viewers ideas for how they could make money on their farm. I mean, we all want to be able to have a, a farm that is productive, producing, but with the way that they drive the costs of food down so much, it's, it's hard to make you know, any money at it. So some of these people have implemented some very interesting strategies. And that's something that we try and capture on film in our series called Meet My Neighbor. We try and capture what it is that they're doing while also educating the world on rural America because we are completely disconnected with our food supply. Nobody really understands where our food comes from and that's why factory farms in the first place have become what they are. What you actually end up seeing in these videos and the farms that we visit are people who are environmentally conscious, people who care about the way that their animals are raised, the way that they treat their animals, and they're creating higher quality products than some of the stuff that you get at the grocery store. So being able to capture that and tell the truth to society about agriculture, about the American homestead, the American farm, that is something that my wife and I have become passionate about. That when you saw our channel change from Yanasa Ranch to Yanasa Ama Ventures, that is why we decided that this wasn't just about us anymore. We needed to tell everybody else's story. Now, the problem with telling these stories is that we often have to travel. And when we travel, we have to stay in hotels. We have to um, face a lot of expenses just getting the video content. And then we're also working with uh, older video uh, filming equipment and things. And so we've got technology th uh, things that we need to work out to, because we want to continue to create the best experience for these people that we possibly can. So I, I've mentioned this on some of our community board posts. We're going to be doing um, some sort of GoFundMe campaign. Uh, I'm not sure when we're going to do that, and, and I'm not sure. We, we still haven't decided. But what we have started doing uh, is, in addition to you know trying to give you guys some Amazon ideas to earn pennies on the dollar there. Um, we've started to put out there a link to our PayPal account and basically offering that as a way for people to be a Patreon to our channel. We don't want to take our content and put it on Patreon where you have to pay or start a paid subscribership on YouTube because our information that we're sharing with everybody is way too important to make it paid information. This needs to be free to everybody. But for those who have an extra dollar, an extra five dollars, an extra ten dollars, who watch our content and really like it and really want to see more of these small farmers and help this concept of, you know, bringing high quality videos. If you've watched some of these videos, there we put a lot of effort into them. Then, you know, make a donation. It would help us be able to get this done faster. You know, if we went out, we, we do, we've explored sponsorship programs, but ultimately, you know, we want our channel to operate off of the freedom of information. And that also means that we need to make sure that we're not aligning ourselves with somebody who's going to try and change our dialogue. Our viewers are our best source of support to be able to create this type of content and get it out there. Um, and I think most of our viewers would agree with me that there's not enough exposure of these farmers out there. There's a construed story, there's a story that's incorrect, that's being portrayed by certain groups and organizations, and what they really want to do is destroy the value of property that comes with farming. I mean, when we're talking about farms across the U.S., there's a lot of, of money involved. A lot of people, a lot of struggling people who have a lot of land, have a lot of heavy expenses with tractors and equipment. If you can figure out a way to crumble that, 
if you could figure out a way to nationalize our food supply, then the other thing you do is you create a lot of cheap land across the United States for everybody to have their single family home on. And that's been a very big movement, a bigger movement than you can possibly imagine. There are a lot of reasons why there is this anti-farming movement, why there is this anti-animal agriculture movement. And so our videos are, are being put out there to help tell the truth about it, to really show the commitment that these people have for their animals, to really show the care that these people have for their land. And that, you know, takes help. It takes help from, from viewers like you guys in helping to support um, our mission and cause. So again, you know, if you can't, no big deal. The reason why we put everything on YouTube is to make it free for you guys. You can support us just by sharing our videos. But if you can, like I said, we're putting that link down there for you because we are trying to encourage our, our channel to be able to grow and succeed off of the patronism of our viewership, off of the, the care of our viewership so that our dialogue is never at all compromised by some organization that says, hey, we'll give you $10,000 to go shoot eight videos. One of the things that we've been working towards right now is um, finding an older camper that we can restore. And basically what we'll do with that is use that as kind of a tour bus. So when we go out to film these, these places, we have our film set up with our computers and everything right on board. We just drive out and we shoot it. We could be anywhere we want to. We can park it on somebody's farm while we're out there shooting and get some fantastic footage. Um, but again, everything that we're doing is to, to get the truth out there. We want the world to understand the truth behind agriculture. We want the world to understand this rural life that's out here that, that so many people living in cities are disconnected with. Because unfortunately that disconnect is creating problems for those who are actually producing the food. It is creating a disconnect of care for where people's food is coming from. And that means the care for the farmers. That means, you know, I don't wanna pay a lot of money for, I don't wanna pay you for what your time is worth, what the food is worth, because I have no idea what you're going through to make that food for me. Uh, just get it on my table, make it cheap. And that's kind of been the attitude. And the other attitude of it has been, you know, if, if we want to make food affordable for everybody, we need to nationalize things. You know what, these farmers that are out there are horrible people anyway. You should see the way they're treating their family. They'll even go as far as, you know, sharing videos from third world countries on animal slaughter to make you feel like it is a very, very bad thing. Um, but the truth is not that. The truth is very, very different. It's very, very compelling. Um, and it's a story that needs to be told. And that is what we have dedicated you know, our channel towards. That's just why we changed our name from Yanasa Ranch to Yanasa Ama Ventures, so that we could venture out and show you what everybody is doing, what the truth is behind, um, you know, these, these rural lifestyles in American agriculture. So I do ask for your support on that. Um, if you can, you know, every little bit helps. Even right now, when we travel uh, to other places in North Carolina, and there's some places, there are some people that have contacted us all the way out into Maine and all the way out uh, on the on the West Coast that would love to get together and do something. But, you know, it's, again, it's the cost of the production. And then these productions, they don't really earn anything. I think they probably earn 50, 100 bucks on, on YouTube and ad revenue. But it's the story that we're telling that is the return for us and the return for you guys and the return for society in general. We have to make sure that the truth is being told, that this information is putting out there. And like I said, it's also helping those small farmers connect with a much larger audience, one that they could never achieve on their own. Um, you know, a small farmer, even if they have a YouTube channel with a thousand subscribers, they're never going to be able to produce content that reaches the reach that a channel with 61,000 subscribers has. So we're able to really help on, on, a, on a much larger scale, the marketing of these small uh, farms and businesses and we're helping we're hoping to really take this program a lot bigger than it is But it does take you know some support. So do consider it. We are um, right now. Like I said, we are working towards uh, Coming up with a better solution for traveling and I'm sure that'll 
create some great video, entertaining video content for you guys in any case as we try and find something and, and fix it up and put it together. And then hopefully, you know, get some more of these videos done uh, and published to our channel so that we can all continue to work to get the right message out there of what's actually going on, who's really creating the food for you. And, um, and hopefully help people learn where to go and find, you know, food from farms instead of grocery stores, other countries, wherever it comes from. But again, Brian, thank you. This is a pretty awesome gift. I, I, this is, well, this is the most incredible gift any subscriber has ever given us. Um, I'm excited to try it out.